Tractor's on the front porch singing an old familiar song. The tractor's in the barn and the pastor's freshly mown. Happy Monday morning, young lady. The new time has really confused me, y'all. I have literally, see these eyes? They didn't sleep They're sparkling. last night. They're sparkling. I could not go to sleep last night. What is going on? I, what were you What were you in a tither over? Not, 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 well, a little something, but we're not going to talk about it. But it's, it's getting better. But I, I'll just say it has to do with buying 50 pounds of bird seed at the big box store and that's all I'm gonna tell you and then y'all can just figure it out 50 pounds of bird seed ought to create a whole lot of other problems <laughs> problems to problems. clean up <laughs> problems and um, we love the birds and we love to feed them but I'm never buying 50 pounds of anything again they leave so, you a gift ah uh, yeah anyway we have had some gifts <laughs> okay speaking of gifts I spent the weekend thank you thank you Lord for my life I, you know, I'm so beyond blessed. You are. And um, I love, I go to First Ball Grand First Baptist, and, you know, I'm a music person. I can't sing a note, couldn't carry a tune in a bucket, but I know what I like and I don't like but what you I can, don't like. But you can listen with the best of them. I can listen with the best of them. And I have, Alan Jackson has the most amazing hymns does CD, he not does he and not? i go to bed listening to that and i wake up listening to that and elvis presley has an amazing hymns cd that i listen to all the time we went into church yesterday and we got to sing jesus loves me and i said jesus does love us and we, the message was about children and we are in a world that scares me to death because we have a child right you sure do that we are responsible for his growth, his well-being, his goodness, his kindness. And, and we know that Jesus did love the little children. And Jesus took care of the children. In today's world, we are allowing, ooh, I can't be mean today, but when you see teachers teaching children to hate our president, when you see teachers mm -hmm teaching children to say bad things about it just drives me crazy when you see pedophiles that get by with all the things they get by with because they are in the in crowd the in crowd and the big clique and they're paying millions of dollars to fly their very elite friends around the world it makes me want to go to a saying <clears throat> and i brought jen and michelle gifts today and it says kind of how I feel about life. Oh, that's mine. You and can we read this? What does it say? Pro. Pro life, pro God, pro gun. That is how I feel. So after yesterday's message, and I will say many, many churches have security now. Isn't it a pitiful piece of crap that we have to have guns protecting us as we go to church? And we do, and I'm so thankful for our gun-toting protectors at church. But whoever thought when we were in These Atlanta, these churches that are having, in Atlanta. that are doing programs on closing on church security on Sunday Whee! mornings. There's Michelle. <laughs> Ours has to lock the doors. Yeah, isn't that something that we are going to church to worship the Lord, and we are 
but, but I'm so glad we have the right to carry a gun to church. I'm so glad that we have the right to protect ourselves in our homes. I'm happy that we have the right to protect ourselves in many open places. But then you have some of these people who want to take those rights away. We have some people in this world who don't care about children. They don't care about human rights. They don't care about, and it Civility, scares me. Even. It scares me, but the message yesterday was Jesus loves me and, and he loves these little children so much. Because the Bible and he tells wants me so, them, absolutely. The Bible says that we are to take care of those children and they are our responsibility. And in today's world, I, you know, you see a parent who would rather do drugs than feed their child. When you see a child show up at school in the same clothes three days in a row because the parents are so stoned on drugs that they're not taking care of the children. Where's the, what happened to, we love the little children and we want them to be protected. We want to be pro-gun, pro-God, pro-life. We want to do that. And we still have a right to do that in America, but there are people trying to take away those rights. And it's very scary to me. So I, as I was cleaning she out, She has a whole basket over here. Just in I'm just gonna forewarn I have, you. I have, I have She has a whole things. basket. I came in here like Little Red Riding Hood in black today. Because as I was cleaning out the trunk of my car when my MKZ blew up, I found something that is very, very special to me. And I don't care how y'all vote. You go vote however you want to vote. You vote your conscience. You vote whatever you want to. I have um, a George Bush thing that hangs on my wall from George and Laura Bush because I supported them during their presidency. I have John Kennedy stuff because I would have supported John Kennedy during his presidency. Even though he did some awfully shady he things did. we don't talk about now. He did. He did. They didn't used to talk he about did. that he then. Did. Now. But let me tell you what I found in the trunk of my car. <laughs> <laughs> so today, in honor of, see this pink and She black matches. I got on, she I matches got her sign. <laughs> I found my women for Trump. I knew I had it. Let me hold this up for I Facebook. I knew I had it. I couldn't find it. But I found my women for Trump. And, and we have a choice in America to vote for whoever we want to vote for. And I understand that today in the polls, Sleepy Joe is on top of the Democratic Party. Well, good, that's good. Let them, let them put whoever they want to up there. We have a right in America. We have a right to carry a gun. We have a right to choose life. We have a right to worship God, and we have a right to vote for whoever we want to. Well, you know to. what tomorrow is. So y'all vote for whoever you want to. You know to. what tomorrow Election is. Election day. And how many of y'all have either early voted or are planning to vote? Exactly. When the paper went to press the other day for <coughs> early voting in McKaysville on a number of races we have going, only 75 people had voted early. Wow. So I'm hoping that at least the rest of the lazy people get out and go vote tomorrow. <laughs> she called people lazy. Well, <laughs> I look at that because either go vote or you cannot, you cannot say a word. I love it. You love cannot it. say a word. And now, if I you got, don't get out and vote, it's too important. Y'all just won't believe what all I've got down here, y'all. I told you she's got this a basket is, full. This is Little Red Riding Hood. I have come in here with the goods today. I planned this last night because I just, I was going through all my stuff. And, and I want one of y'all to come out on camera because we have got to get a full-blown close-up. I have some viewers who joined us in the last few years who had never seen Hans Rufert in the Hans Rufert he was before cancer. And I found it's hard to believe it's hard to believe that there I are people that haven't one seen of him you to see him as he was before cancer because so many of you you see our dear dear friend he doesn't look Hans like, Rufert. But he looked better the other day Is when he was on cool? with you than he Is has looked not, in a long I found long time. This magazine and I was so excited. He is Jasper's jack of all trades, and at the same time I found this, I found something else that connects to Hans Rufert that really doesn't connect to Hans at all. But isn't that the coolest magazine cover? I love it. There's our dear friend Hans Rufert. I found gift certificates that were bought for me the week before the Woodbridge Inn shut its doors. So, <laughs> I have. <laughs> I had a lunch that I, I never got. Hundreds of dollars worth of gift I cards. I miss it. I miss. I miss <laughs> anyway, it terribly. Open it back but, up. But we, you know, that that was such a such a sad day to see that place close. But it is a time in his life that he is showing up. He is doing things for other people. There's going to be an event. Um, we're going to talk about in the near future because they're going to be doing a meal for um, basically bidding on 
having him come to your home and prepare a meal to raise awareness for spaying, neutering, and saving animals. And so once again, he's involved. He has fought everything. Y'all have been right there with him. You have helped him. You have done so much for him. And now he's given back. And don't you love he's that no matter so what much. he's been through, he continues to give back. That's what life is about. Now I'm going to share something with y'all. And if you ever go to New Orleans, I want you to go see. I want you to go to this church. I want you to visit this church. This is Refuge Church. And this is Freddie's cousin, who is the pastor here. He also preached um, uh, Freddie's grandma's funeral. And I just became hooked on Justin's preaching. His, his preaching is so direct, so real, so great. And he is sponsored by the Canton First Baptist Church. Um, they, he is in their missionary field. He went to New Orleans. He opened this church in the, I might add, the red light district. He is amazing, saves, saves souls by bringing them to the word and just, it's amazing. So his church um, put out this flyer and we had it at church yesterday. I just wanna read you a little bit about what he does and they've just adopted a child they have several of their own but they've just adopted a child and it's they are amazing because you know there are people we look at all the negative and the and the horrible in the world but then we look at this so i just want to read you this is a letter from justin dear friends it has been an incredible start to the new summer here in new orleans the lord has been so moving in so many ways over the last five weeks i want to highlight three things we have two of our leaders leading the way as our mission team coordinators they are doing an incredible job managing training and deploying all of our mission teams. We have had um, the most church member participation in regards to outreach efforts and teams that we have ever had. We now have five mission teams helping us show and share the gospel. And they go from doing things like storm drain cleaning to coffee shop ministry to laundromat ministry. You know, a lot of people who are homeless go to the laundromat mm -hmm. because it's a place to stay warm and a monthly community meal. And I thought you would love that because they do a monthly community meal. And it has pictures of this as they're in the laundromat and as they're speaking to people. And that's what it's about, you know, going to church. A lot of people go to church, but there are a lot of people who have never darkened the doors of a church. And so Justin is out there reaching those who have not darkened the doors of a church. And in their efforts, over 100 gospel conversa conversions, conversations, of which many of them turned into follow-up conversations. We are also rejoicing that two people who gave their lives to Jesus, please be in prayer that these men would continue to walk their walk by developing and joining a discipleship group. We have many more teams coming to work alongside this. Now, if y'all have never been to New Orleans, it is like Sin City, Party Capital, you name it. I mean, it is, he chose the roughest people, place people in the world. People go into the French Quarter and become someone else. Yes, I've and, seen it happen. Yes, and he, he chose this to go there and to truly, truly make a difference. And so he talks about the phase of different things they're doing and, and then um, they need people to pray for them. And that's the point I wanna get to. It says, third, we need people who intercede for us in prayer. I'm fully confident that there have been and continues to be thousands of people praying for our mission, our church, our members, our community, and our family. We ask that you continue to pray for us in the coming days and years, and uh, please invite others to pray also. Not a day goes by that I'm not reminded of the faithful ministry partners we have who labor in so many ways to see the gospel planted and spread throughout our community. This daily reminder has given me a deeper love for the church in general. We love you and I'm so grateful for you. And this is from Justin Haynes. And um, he and his wife, what an amazing difference. A young couple with several children of their own, they've adopted another one. And, and they chose to pick up roots from, you move from Canton or Ball Ground, Georgia, and you go to New Orleans, come on, that but is But that a big just shows deal. that there are mission programs that don't require you going out of the country. Exactly, exactly. There are things that, that need to be done <coughs> at home or within yep. our boundaries. Yep, and, and we saw that when we went to Eastern Kentucky. You know, when we went to Eastern Kentucky, I will put it up against any foreign country Some of the anywhere. most abject poverty you've ever yeah, seen. absolutely, absolutely. Totally and completely. So, so please um, pray for Justin and his family. And, and if you can support them, if you will just Google and look at Refuge Church. And um, they are located in New Orleans and uh, amazing. And, and again, First Baptist Church of Canton. 
sponsors them, and they are um, That is such a amazing. phenomenal church. He is one fantastic preacher, and I have a video. Um, last time he came to First Baptist to preach, I sat on the front row and I videoed the whole thing, and I shared it with everybody, and, and a lot of people were really touched by it. He is such a powerful, positive young man. And um, I think today, in today's world, on the way up here, I was listening to a song. And the other day, Freddie said, I've never heard that song before. And I said, oh, it's always been one of my favorite. It's called He's a Rebel by the Crystals. And as I'm driving up here today, I'm listening to He's a Rebel, and I'm thinking about one man in particular. His name is Donald John Trump. He went to Washington as a rebel. He was a rebel outside the norm. He's fighting he the whole establishment everything. today. He does everything in his own way, the best that he knows how. He took God to the White House with him, which blows my mind because, you know, um, we have a president now. You may not like that he does this or does this or does this or does this, but I sure do like what is happening with the economy. I certainly do like what he has done. I, I absolutely and so, I'm so in awe of his precious, precious wife and the love she has for children. And when I heard the pastor's message yesterday and we were talking about the children, and I thought in all the things that happened to us growing up as a kid from a divorced family, first of all, born to a mother out of wedlock, and then my mother married somebody and they got a divorce, and then there I was again, I thought my life was rough. But there are kids today in America, in our country, who will go to bed hungry, who will get on a school bus tomorrow with the same clothes they wore today because their mom or their dad are out doing dope. And there are people whose children are paying the price for the stupid in America. And there's a lot of stupid going on in America. We see all this, it's about me, me, me. What can I do for me? Can I go party? Can I have this night out? Can I do this? Think about your children. And, and the message yesterday is Jesus loves the little children. Jesus loves the little children, but he commands us to love those children. And if we don't love those children, who's going to, Jen? Who's going to? No one. Yeah. And they're, then they're going to grow up not to love their children. A generation after a generation Can, after it, a generation. It just it feeds upon itself. And we've got to break that cycle right now. We have to. We or have to. 50 years from now, someone will be sitting in these chairs mm -hmm. talking about the very same thing. I think that's what hurts more than anything yep. is to just to see the repetition. I know when we would we, we, we do Christmas up in, in my area for a lot of families that, that desperately need the help. And we go in there and the kids don't have food, they don't have clothes, they don't have shoes, but there's a great big monstrous TV hanging on oh, the yeah. wall. Oh, yeah. There's a pack of two of cigarettes lying around yeah, yeah. and there's a and bottle there's a of booze. Pack of beer. And there's a bottle yeah. of booze or a twelve pack yeah. or both of them. Yeah. yeah. And what well, the measures we go through now to try to fix it so that the parents can't take those clothes and those toys mm -hmm. and take them back to get gift cards to buy right. more cigarettes, right. more more booze right. with. That and is it's something sad. when you think about that, you don't think you automatically think, well, if we take this load of toys over to these kids' houses, everything's going to be fine, and White Christmas will be there yeah. for them, and Santa will come. You don't think about the parents literally pulling things out of the sure. kids' hands sure. and going back and returning them to get the money to buy drugs or money to buy yeah. cigarettes yeah. and alcohol, or that great big screen TV that's hanging on the wall yep. with a wrestling program or something yep. on. And I think that's the saddest part is for a long time when we celebrate Christmas, we, I mean, we're not special. But we go out and we buy some toys and we, we give because we have mm -hmm. everything that we need. What do I need another item to dust for? What does Michelle need to dust for? Mm -hmm. What do you need to dust for? Honey, yesterday, you talk about dust. I can't breathe today because well, we, I've been having we rearranged the whole house. Well, you saw how dusty my house was. We're working on the ceiling, working in the roof, and working in the attic, and doing all that work. Oh, and yeah. by the time you yeah. get through the dust cloth, yeah. then it's there. So I just quit dusting till yeah. they finished everything. Yeah. But that's difficult. But we need to stop and think. We need to use our heads and, and, and share more. We're not preaching and we're not carrying on, but I think it's something we need to do. Now tell us why when it's time for a second opinion win. It is so funny because this, I got this book from a friend who, um, um, <clears throat> cleaning out a house for an estate sale, and, and this book was in there, and it says, you know it's time for a second opinion win. And some of them are a little bit crude, and we won't do them on the air, but some are pretty cute. 
You know it's time for a second opinion when your doctor keeps you on the treadmill until he che until your check clears. <laughs> You know, that sounds about right. Or the insurance gives their clearance. And you and know acceptance. it's time for a second opinion when your plastic surgeon's office has a connecting suite to glamour shots. Yes, you know it's, yes. Your doctor is retired from the Navy and the eye chart is in Morse code. And I got to tell y'all about eye charts. I left, I was working in North Carolina then. I was on the air. I had cataracts really, really bad. And I was driving a white Toyota at the time. And so I had an appointment with an eye surgeon, Dr. Daniel On, which I absolutely love this man. He operates at the Seventh-day Adventist Church over in Calhoun, where they pray over you before they operate on you. There's prayer, the nurses, the doctor, everybody's in the room for prayer. Love, love, love this doctor. I get in my car in North Carolina, and I head to Chatsworth, or to Calhoun, to the doctor. And I'm going through, and I'm driving, and honestly, I couldn't see. And I get there, and I go in, and so the doctor comes in, the nurse comes in, and they're like, and, and um, she has the chart on the wall, but I don't see it because I can't see. And she said, um, we want you to read the chart. And I said, okay, and Dr. On's standing over there, and he said, um, go ahead and read it. And I said, well, I will when you put it up there. They said, it's up there, Sherry, and I couldn't see it. So, you know, you're in trouble. You might need a second opinion you can't if you're driving the, you around can't with cataracts and you can't see a chart. I couldn't see. And on rainy nights or dark nights, oh, I, know. I couldn't drive at all. I couldn't drive at all. I, I didn't realize I was as blind cataracts as I was till I had my cataracts take taken of. off. Yeah. Holy yeah. cow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I got scared yeah. after the cataracts like came off. Because I'm thinking that you're like, really, is my house this dirty? <laughs> I, I didn't understand. I couldn't read highway signs. I, yeah. I oh, couldn't yeah. see squat. Yeah. I'm surprised yeah. I didn't so kill somebody or things, myself. As we get older, you need to take care Watch of Watch out it. for them. Yeah. Okay, now this one is good because I've been, I've had some orthopedic problems. I had to have an MRI, I had a broke leg, broke this, broke this. I've had so much broke and, and no wonder when the weather changes, I don't need to watch the weatherman. Your orthopedic surgeon can't remember the words after the foot bone's connected to the ankle bone, the ankle bone's connected to the, <laughs> yeah, right. And you're positive your physician's office manager is Natasha with the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we all, we need some You got to smile. It we, goes back, you got to smile and laugh to. at something. You have to laugh. You have to be. Keep from crying. You have to. Yesterday's time change put me in that funk. I was up all night last night, y'all. Couldn't sleep. I'm so, darkness brings on depression, and I'm so aware of that. And I want y'all to laugh, to find something funny, to read your favorite cookbook, and I brought you my favorite cookbook, although I would much rather not present this cookbook because I would much rather say that Marcel is still alive and well with us, but this was done in honor and in memory of my precious, precious, precious cousin, Marcel Ledbetter, who went to be with the Lord, and I, I would give anything if she was still here, and this is, this is so tempting. This is her mama, my Aunt Leela, on the top of the page, and she is the person who was so patient and taught me to make, number one, she taught me to crochet, she taught me to make biscuits, and she taught me to make the world famous Brunswick stew. And you stew. didn't get me one of those? I, Dawn bought me this for Christmas. Dawn bought me this for Christmas, and there was a waiting list, and it was a big to-do. And this, y'all, honestly, um, this, if you can get online, it's called the Dough Bowl, the Dough Bowl Biscuit Maker. Mountain Roots Revival, it is out of print. I don't know if they're gonna do a reprint, but look at this, Jen. This is Southern cooking. This is mm. all from mm. Marcel's Kitchen. And Don got me this for Christmas. There was a long waiting list. It was rather expensive, but it is such a treasure. This is my cousin, Shirley Fricks. Well, you weren't buying that for the recipes anyway. No. Because, no, you were buying it for the memories precious and the thoughts. Precious memories, precious memories. Absolutely. And and this is just, and, and this is how I remember my granny. Is her cake recipe in there? I think so, yeah. This is how I remember my granny made cobbler on top of the stove. She boiled her yes. fruit. My and mother then she did. She did drop dumplings in it, and then she put it in the oven to brown it. My mother did and the so same thing. And so this is, and again, it, I don't know if it's available. You might Amazon, Google it, but it is the dough bowl, dough bowl biscuit maker. 
Her name was Marcel Ledbetter. You have seen her pound cakes on my show when she used to come and visit. She left us suddenly. She had lung problems. Her breathing got crazy and she went in the hospital. We fully expected her to come out of the hospital and she did not make it. She went on to be with the Lord. So um, what a precious, precious lady and man, she is so missed. And her cakes, ain't never been a pound cake that would come up against hers, never. She was just amazing. And her biscuits, oh my goodness, and her dressing, her chicken and dressing was like world famous. So just j such a great memory. And uh, if, you, if you check it out, it's Mountain Roots Revival. I don't know if there are any books left, but my precious it. Dawn ordered me this, and uh, it is fantastic. So, so as I'm, I'm going, going back through, to seeing that coconut cake <coughs> that flashed by I'm me. As I'm going through junk this weekend, <coughs> I found other things, and I found something. You still got a basket full down here, everybody. Yeah, I found something that um, I got while I was on the air, and have you read this, No Regrets? I, I think this. I have. I brought this because I'm going to share it with Ansley. Ansley will be home with us very shortly, and we're excited about that. And when we look at our life, this is by our, uh, Robin Bertram. <coughs> She's a dear friend of um, Pastor and uh, Miss Debbie Dockery. And when I think about our life, do you have regrets about your life? Of well, course. I think everybody does. Of course but we do. The, everything that we've done makes us what we are today. Mm -hmm. Everything uh, we've done makes okay. us what we are today. Yeah, everything makes us what we are today. And so as you look at your life, look at your life and say, how could I have made it and learned from life if I didn't have regrets? We all need to have regrets. But if you're looking at giving gifts, you can Google this, you can get online, you can go to Amazon. And again, it is no regrets. How loving deeply and living passionately can impact your legacy forever. We should do that. We should do that. We look at this. What does this look like? Life. <laughs> oh my God. Chocolate cooked killers. chocolate icing. Boys, y'all are going to want us to cook from this cookbook. Whoa. All right. We're going to take a commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to keep digging through this basket because I found a lot of really interesting things. As I, we kind of rearranged all the furniture at home yesterday. And it's kind of like if I were a drunk and went home, I wouldn't be able to find the house because we've rearranged everything. <laughs> We'll be back in just a minute, guys. You have never been so happy, dancing, swinging, laughing at me. Smile on my face, it's happiness for days. Uh oh. of your first trip to the local Dairy Queen or your daily visit for a $5 lunch special. The Jasper Dairy Queen has been a part of the community for over 40 years. Locally owned and operated, Jasper DQ is the place where specialty items often become favorites. Burgers, shakes, chicken tenders with yummy dip and gravy, and don't forget the rings and fries. Celebration cakes are always fresh and fast and include the awesome blizzard cake. Stop by where folks are always meeting and eating. 515 at Highway 53. Just follow the crowd to the Dairy Queen. Fountain Roofing has been providing excellent service for 35 years. Let Lonnie assist you in choosing the roof perfect for your home and your budget. Commercial or residential, he can handle it all. Fountain Roofing continues to provide quality workmanship and will provide references upon request. At Fountain Roofing, we've got you covered. Call Lonnie at 706-692-6997. That's 706-692-6997. Since 1962, Gilmer Towing has been serving the North Georgia area and would like to say thanks to all of our customers. For over 48 years, Gilmer Towing has carried on a family tradition with an experienced and friendly staff that offers 24-hour damage-free towing, unlocks, and four-wheel drive recovery. So when you're stuck in a ditch, tires flat, or car won't start, give us a call. Local or long hauls, big or small, Gilmer Towing will get them all. Give us a call today at 706-636-4TOW. We've had Alpha insurance since our first daughter. And when we had quadruplets, <laughs> we really needed Alpha. Now we need our own insurance with great rates, fast claim service, and a local agent we 
doing that. And we want to company our kids and grandkids can trust. <laughs> call Alma. The best agents in the business. Call Ed Stepp in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. With speeds up to 150 meg, ETC and Ignite delivers more, more, more. More shopping, more music, more learning, more streaming. More speed to power smartphones, movies, and streaming video. More speed for more devices in your home. And more room in your budget with ETC's low pricing and bundled discounts. Get the fastest internet around with Ignite's new 150 meg. More speed, more savings. Call ETC today. I'm Lauren Smith, the University of Georgia. Today we have John Davis, former Georgia Tech All-American, Frank Ross, captain of the Bulldogs, 1980 National Championship team in a Subway showdown. Subway. How many Subways does that Singleton own? He just up at number 17. He started in my hometown of LJ. Yeah, but he graduated from University of Georgia. Hey guys, who's hungry? It looks like Subway and Singleton Food Services Incorporated, the winner again. Oh, Chevy runs deep in Canton at Bill Holt Chevrolet. Deeper selection, deeper discounts, and we're letting everybody know it. Not just Chevy buyers in Atlanta. Chevy buyers in Blairsville, Blue Ridge, Jasper, and LJ. If you're out there, we're right here with one huge selection at Truck HQ. Always get our lowest prices and friendliest service. Online, BillHoltGM.com. Because when you're talking trucks, you're talking Truck HQ. When Mike leaves town, it's a little scary. You never know who might be outside. But we feel safer inside knowing our home is being monitored by a local company. I can check our alarm from just about anywhere. So when we get home, I know it's safe. Get peace of mind for your family with a local company. Switch your current security monitoring to ETC Security and get six months monitoring free. Call ETC Security now or visit etcsecurity.com to learn more. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. In today's changing world, some things should never change. Time-honored, compassionate services are what families have come to know with Roper Funeral Home. Our professional and courteous staff offers traditional services, cremations, as well as advanced funeral planning, which relieves the burden from those we love. Hello, I'm Kevin Roper. If you have any questions about the services we provide, we invite you to give us a call, stop by, or better yet, ask a family who has used our services. Okay, we're back. Okay. We're talking about the fact that I don't like darkness. I'm not a reader because I just don't take the time to read, but I want to suggest some things for you. If you are a reader and you're looking at this time that drives a lot of people crazy, me included, I want you to pick up this book by uh, Robin Bertram and it is No Regrets. A good, short, good read that will help you through some bad days. If you know somebody, if you have addictions, if you have struggled with something, I want you to read this book. The Key to Your Unexpected End, and um, this is a book that will help you. It may open your eyes. It may make you think, oh, how could I be that stupid? But as I watch the children of America today, mm -hmm. and I see children whose parents are not you know, I quit drinking. Not a lot of people know, but when Don was six months old, I quit drinking. 
because um, her dad was in a band. We were in Nashville. We were out. The band was playing all over the place. We were partying, a lot of partying going on. But one night, I had had two drinks, and I ran a stop sign. And I didn't wreck, didn't kill anybody. But when I got home, I said, God, if you will let me get home to my baby daughter tonight, I promise you I will never do this again. Don't drink, don't, don't touch it, don't mess with it, don't trust myself too, because if two drinks would make me run a stop sign, what would four drinks do? Mm -hmm. So I just choose to be non-alcoholic, and that's my business. If you drink, it's your business. Now, but, how much older than Don was Angela? Five years. I couldn't remember how four, much it was. Four and a half years. Someone asked me this weekend. Four and a half years. And, and so, um, you know, I just had this idea. Ange knew who I was. She was four and a half years old. Dawn was six months old. If I had died that night, Dawn wouldn't know her mother. And I remember at that, that stop sign is at the um, intersection of Coal Mountain and Highway 9. And I literally, I just didn't see the stop sign because I was driving a 73 black Continental, Lincoln Continental, y'all would love this car. I was the designated driver because I was sober, but I had only had two drinks and I ran a stop sign. So I choose to be a non-alcoholic person because my dad was an addict. We have those things in our genes, and I understand that. And I understand that if I, that's why I don't do anything. Like if I take Advil, I'm weird about taking Advil. You know, I take two, and then I'm like, oh, I better not take any more today. Because I know how addictions happen. I had a friend in D.C., and she was wonderful. But give her, I'm not joking, this much wine at dinner. Mm -hmm. And she and turns she, into a different she person. She became a different person, yeah, yeah. loud, belligerent. Yeah. You couldn't deal with her. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but I'm not joking. I'm and not I know talking, people like that. I'm not and talking I'm, about a bottle or anything, yeah. but I'm talking about two or three sips of yeah. wine. And this woman would go. I even heard a hotel group of salespeople say, How do we negotiate a contract with her After knowing that all, like we, this. all we have to do is give her a, a teaspoon of wine and she goes nuts and she'll yeah. sign anything? Yeah, yeah. But you got to stop and think because you don't realize how it changes you. Yeah. Yeah, I do. It truly does. I do, and, and I understand that. And so I choose to not drink. That's my choice. And a lot of I have a lot of friends who have a glass of wine with dinner. I have a lot of friends who might have a drink with dinner. And that's their choice. And they handle it well, and they handle it correctly. I didn't. You know, I didn't. So I admitted my failure, and I said, God, and I picked up Don, and I will never forget it. Angela was asleep. They were at Granny Wade's, and, and I just was so happy. When I walked in and Angie was laying there on the couch asleep and Dawn was over there in the baby bed and I picked her up and I was just like sobbing. And I said, I will never do this again because I realized that well, the, God decisions, intervened. the decisions that we make, you know, make our children either motherless or fatherless mm -hmm. or I watch Wednesday's Child and Wednesday's Child really gets to me. It's like I want to adopt all these kids. I can't adopt them. I can't even take care of a puppy. I don't want a puppy. I don't want nothing that's my responsibility anymore. I'm too old. But, but I, I watch Wednesday's Child, and you look at these kids, and they will say, he's 17. He is about to opt out of the program, not opt out of the program, but age out mm -hmm. of the program. And he has been in care since he was four years old. Now, you think about that child. He was in care since four years old because his mother chose to be an addict. It's very, very it's hard. Awful. It's difficult These for them. These children don't deserve And they're not hitting. transitioned. They're simply the door is open no. and out they go at no, 18 years it's old. it's awful. It's yeah. just terrible. Well, let me ask you on a higher note. Yes. How did Don, Don and Lonnie do this weekend they in the fishing? They were in 12 out of 200 boats. 12th is not good, you know, for Lonnie Fountain. And he told them, he tickled me to death. When he went up to get his check for 12th place, he said, you know, I've won this thing five times. <laughs> I well, I didn't. I knew that she. Like, was, I knew that he wanted the boat. He wanted to win. He and wanted he to win, win, and I, I didn't see what and they. And it was 32 degrees on the water. It was miserable. It was cold. It was windy, and, and they loved they it. They came in 12th out of like 200 boats signed up. But I love that he said, you know, I usually win here. I'm used to winning here. I've won five times. And I thought, you know, as quiet as Lonnie Fountain is for him to say, I usually win here. I'm not used to coming here and getting 12th place. And not winning. Not winning. So, but anyway. Um, okay, well, I, thank was, you to I was wondering. for him. And 
And there, okay, here, this is the book. If you have a kid who's fighting addiction, if you have an addiction problem yourself, the key to your expected end. And the key is often locked up in yourself and you make a decision. You decide where you're going. Okay, this is one I've dreaded, but I wanna share it with y'all. Um, no time to say goodbye. My dear friend Laura lost her daughter um, one year ago and she keeps asking me over and over, how do you deal with it? How do you deal with it? No time to say goodbye. Surviving the suicide of a loved one. This is by Carla Fine. It is also something you can pick up on Amazon. And as these dreary winter nights are upon us and we're facing the holidays and you're setting the table and that's what yesterday Mm -hmm. We're getting ready for the holidays, and I'm like, okay, I can do this, and I can do this, and I can do this. And then I look around, and I have an arrangement on my table that my daughter made me 13 years ago. 13 years ago. I don't know a florist that I would trust to do what she did for me. I don't, when y'all see the set for Christmas, Well, she converted your house. She did, and I don't have Totally anymore. and completely, every room she did something. When you see our Christmas set that will appear in the next couple of weeks, all of that is Angela's work. And um, to look around my house every single day and see all these things that she loved, to see her grandmother's, actually her great-grandmother's picture of the Lord's Supper hanging in my dining room, that is because I happen to um, be lucky enough to have been loved by my mother-in-law and um, I treasured her friendship and, and I'm lucky enough to have some of her treasures. If your house is filled with treasures and you've lost a loved one, do like I do and look at the treasures and smile. Mm -hmm. Because I look at those treasures and it was like the, the arrangement on the table yesterday was somewhere else in the house and it needed dusting. It was covered in dust. And so I put it in the shower and I gave it a shower and I freshed it up and I put it on my dining room table. And then I counted the years. Angela made me that 13 years ago. I love it as much today as I did the day that she made it. And so if you have these dishes of your grandmother's and your grandmother's gone on to be with the Lord, if you have these dishes that were your aunt's maybe, I have some beautiful dishes that were my Aunt Leela's. I love them. And I always, this is the time of year I get it out so I can see it because it's very important to me. It's just like this cookbook. Aunt Leela is on the back of this cookbook. This was the sweetest, kindest lady that ever drew a breath and the stubbornest lady who ever drew a breath. She and my granny would pout at each other. If one of them said something about the other one's kids that they didn't agree with, they would pout and they would tickle me to death because they were both stubborn as bulls. And the sweetest, kindest lady, she lived to be 96 years old. Her daughter, Marcel, didn't make it to 89, and, and that was tough because we knew, well, her mom had a long, hard life, and, and she canned and put up and saved and did, and Marcel would get that same thing. God had a different plan. Her breathing got messed up, and I don't know what happened, but her lungs, that was it. it happens fast. You know, it was it. Well, so. Dr. Eric's staff, Jennifer and um, Eric and his wife, this past weekend did the suicide prevention walk at Piedmont Park to raise mm -hmm. funding for the suicide yep. prevention hotline. And suicide that's a, that's is a, very real. That's a, that's a big project for them. They're all very it is, it dedicated is very to real. that. And if you know somebody who is facing and struggling with the winter and maybe their first year anniversary, especially of a loss, get this book for them, No Time to Say Goodbye. Surviving the Suicide of a Loved One, and it's by Carla Fine, and it is something that everybody needs to share. Now, kids, we love the idea that ETC for many, many years has honored, promoted, we've had kids in the studio, we've had, we have an invitation into Santa and Mrs. Claus, we're waiting on a date. Okay, we've got some kids we that would love that, to come see we Santa. We hope that it's gonna work including out. Including Mr. Riker. We hope that it's gonna work out, we're not sure yet, but we're trying. Well, Santa's so busy this time of He's year. He's very busy. We love featuring kids on the show, and so the Spelling Bee is one of ETC's greatest ways to feature children and to show just how flippin' smart they are because the Spelling Bee has some amazing contestants. It's like, I think, was it last year that they just kept going at it, going at it? They just kept on kept and on and kept on and, on and, on kept and on. I'm like, holy cow. But, but that's, that's your future that Saturday. you're looking at. That's the future that that's you're looking future. at right there. That's your investment. 
This so. is going to be this Saturday, and it's the Phantom Performing Arts Center at 3 o'clock. ETC is responsible for this. ETC does the gifts, does the um, scholarships. The kids win money for their school. It is a great way to, number one, um, acknowledge that we've got go, some go smart and kids. See it, go we and see it live. Kids. Go and see it live. If, and if you can't watch it on ETC. What else can I dig out? I don't know, Let's but you've got, a, you've got a basket full down well, here. The rest of it is, well, these are, this is interesting, y'all. I love it when she picks it up and says this is, okay. when she prefaces it, this is interesting. I have two copies of this, and this is a program from December the 8th, 2015, and this is December the 15th, 2015, and before we leave today, I'm going to get the guys to play them and see what they are. I think, I think, that they might have been made for y'all, <laughs> and I ended up with them, I think, I'm not sure, so we're going to check it out. But this is what happens when you go through your stuff and your drawers and your stuff and you dig out and you dig out and you dig out. Well, this weekend, I, some things happened and I was in a little bit of a tense and it had to do with that stupid bird feed. And that, that bird <laughs> feed just about got the best of me and I was just getting all antsy and I was just getting all and I was... I was being mean, and I thought, what is wrong with me? It's just stupid bird feed that we had to throw away over half of it, and da da da, and I was just all. And, and so, a friend, Susan Liebert, brought me a CD last week that she sings this song. And it was so funny because I was in a tears. I was actually in a fit. I was I having say, a hissy you, fit. You were having a hissy fit. I was having a hissy fit over this stupid bird seed that just made this big mess in my kitchen. And I was just like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Like, I have time for this junk. So I thought, well, I'll just put on Susan's CD and see if it calms my nerves. Well, I put it on and I played it for like an hour and a half because it just kept playing the same song over and over and over. And it was very calming. <laughs> and I thought, well, so that song made me sit down and go through all these baskets of papers and all these things because I just said what happened to me in the kitchen and all this bird feed having to be thrown away and all this junk, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Are you trying to think? That worked for Karnak and Johnny Carson. <laughs> I was just seeing if it would work for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't working. I guess Johnny took we'll his Karnak with him. him. It's Here not it working. But, but I did find these, and I laughed because I said if Susan hadn't given me that CD to calm my fears, I'd probably start shooting up my kitchen <laughs> because I was so mad about this bird seed. Bird seed went everywhere, and it was just a big gummed up mess, and it's just been a disaster. But I almost have it all cleaned up now. But You'll find some more in three you months. There's bird seeds. So anyway, but um, we are blessed. We are so beyond blessed. And, oh, so and in so many ways. We don't so even count ways. them. So many ways. Well, I was I was listening last night again before I went to bed and still listening to. And I gotta say, oh, November the seventh. Can you Google this? November the seventh. Leonard Skinner movie is coming out this morning on Fox News. I was so disappointed in my Fox, my Fox um, host. One out of three has seen the movie Sweet Home Alabama. Well, everybody knows Leonard Skinner is from Alabama. No, and they're he's not. Seen, and he's no, seen, they're not. They're no, they're not. Jacksonville. <laughs> but they sing. They sing Sweet Home Alabama. But they are doing the movie that will be aired this Thursday, November the seventh. It is going to be aired. And it had it was live in front of 50,000 people in Jacksonville because that's where they're all from. And we know my daughter's obsession with Leonard Skinner. Not many people's funerals start with Freebird, but my Angela's did because. But that was her anthem. That was her anthem. She loved Leonard Skinner. She loved everything anthem. about them. She traveled with them. She was lucky enough to work their shows in Mobile, Alabama, on several occasions. And she just loved them. And so this morning they were on Fox and Friends and they were talking about the movie. And I said, oh my gosh, Ange would love to see this. Yeah, she'll probably get to see it. She's probably watching from somewhere up above. She's so, seen it. She's seen it already. Know. She knows. But, but it's going to be airing this Thursday. And I can't remember what channel, what, but, but you can Google it. But if you're a Leonard Skinner fan, you know what happened to them. There was a plane crash that killed part of their band members. There, you know, Street several. Survivor. Several, several of them have died. Um, it, it's is just that the amazing. name of it? Street Survivors. It's Street Survivors: The True Story of the Leonard Skinner Plane Crash. Okay, and when does it air? Okay, this is November the seventh. This one is coming out, 
and it's November the 7th, this Thursday, it's going to be, and Google Fox and Friends and see, because Ansley talked with them this morning, and they actually um, were on set with them, but you'll know more about it, but we all grew up with that music. How many times have you seen the movie Sweet Home Alabama? Oh gosh, it's one of those two. If I'm channel surfing, I can go in and out of and pick it right up. I it's probably such a watched cute, it 50 it's times. It's such a cute movie. But when, when two of the hosts, I think it was Brian and Steve, said, we've never seen that movie, I thought, and you've lived well, in Well, how a, can they get to this point in their I, lifetime? That's what I thought. What's wrong with you people? But it is such a sweet movie. So if you're looking at uh, the nights getting dark early, put in the movie Sweet Home Alabama. You it's the laugh. same number of hours of daylight, though. I know it is. I know it is. These people that say, well, we're going to get another hour of daylight, and I just look at them like, what is the matter with you? You do in the morning. You just yes, don't you think do. about it. Yes, but you do. I, I just want us to pick it's one time and mind. stay there. I want to pick yes, one time and yes, stay there. Yeah, Why yeah. do we need to fall, fall, fall back but, and spring forward? But the bus drivers, it is better to pick children up in the daylight than it is to pick them up in the dark. Well, I understand so, that. See, now they're getting them in the daylight. And I understand that. I just want to pick one and stay there. I don't want to have to fall yeah, back and yeah. spring forward. I, yeah. That just screws with well, your whole I'm, thing. I'm totally confused because I haven't changed the clock in my car yet, number one. I, I changed my clocks before 2 o'clock well, on know Saturday I'm night. Car, I changed them that night to. and just made up my mind. I did wake up early on Sunday morning, but I try not to let it get me. The, the springing forward bothers me, me more than the falling back does. Well, we want to remind you. Watch the movie, Sweet Home Alabama. It will make you laugh. It will make you love that we live in the South. It will make you pat your toes. And, Are you and finding when it's on it's, Thursday night? It's fantastic. Night? It's fantastic. But When's it, it on? I'll find out by tomorrow. But it's, it, is, it is affiliated with Fox, I would say, or Fox would not have been promoting it so heavily. But uh, again, and where's my sign? What did I do with my sign, Jen? Here it is. It's right there, right next okay. to your foot. You know, what y'all do in your life is your business. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I used to cuss pretty bad, and I've tried to quit. I'm that. looking in the basket, everybody. Just I'm trying. <laughs> oh yeah, and I brought that. I was going to play that, but but we didn't get to it. I but, love oh, that. Oh, and I brought this. I got to share this with y'all. This winter, this is a stress relieving ball, and our broker at United Country bought these. We've given out about ten thousand of them, so there must be a lot of stress going on. But this is good if you're sitting around doing nothing and you're stressed. My, this hand was broken, and I can tell when the weather changes, I'm paying the price. Well, gee whiz, so I just found us. three things in there. Yeah, I was going to play a couple of them today, but anyway. But um, Two of my favorite don't let songs. the darkness stress you out. You know, don't let the sadness eat you alive. Pick up this book, No Time to Say Goodbye. It deals with suicide. I've been there, done that. I know that you have to deal with it. You can't give up. And again, it's by Carla Fine. If you're dealing with addiction and you have a problem, if you are, you know, the saddest thing is to see a family member who is an addict and doesn't get to be at home for the holidays. Mm -hmm. So that is really, really tough. The Key to Your Expected End is a great book by Katie Souza. <clears throat> and No Regrets, No Regrets. If you were to die today, have you really lived? That says it all. Are you doing what you want to do? Are you enjoying what you want to enjoy? Are you supporting and, and throwing your heart into something? Throw your heart into something and it changes your life. Well, my heart is thrown into re-electing my president, Donald John Trump. And I wore my hot pink today in honor of this. I've got pink flowers vote. on my sleeve to vote. <laughs> y'all vote however y'all want to vote. It's your business. But my business is to make America great again. And I'm going to work hard to do that. Keep America great. I'm going to be on the campaign trail. I'm going to be calling, knocking on doors. I'm going to be making people aware of what is going on in America. I'm going to be trying to make it a better place for the children of the world. And I'm very proud to be a Trump supporter. Um, September, October 2000. I know that a lot of people, um, a lot of liberals, I have a grandson that won't even talk to me because he's a total liberal. He's also um, just a different kind of fellow. And that's his business. You know, that's his business. Well, he lives but, in a country where he can't <laughs> express. Okay, this has got to be the best one to end on. 
You know it's time for a second opinion when the nurse gives your doctor a baseball cap to match his ego that reads wide load. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, I love this. You know it's time for a second opinion. Your doctor thinks the Pillsbury Doughboy has a yeast infection. <laughs> okay, that'll do it. <laughs> that was that'll good. do it for the day. That'll be that'll do it for the day. You know, if we don't look at this world and laugh, we're in a world of trouble. We're in a world of trouble. We are facing a time that children need our respect, our love, our support, and it is time that we do all of that. So the preacher said it best yesterday. Jesus loves me, and we know that. The children need to know that. They need to so know completely. that Jesus loves you, and we need to support the children. And um, this, <clears throat> this weekend, Bob Reese, our dear, dear friend, is doing his White Christmas for, I believe it's the 33rd year. It's going to be at Canton First Baptist Church beginning at 6 o'clock on Saturday night. If you can, if you can donate, if you can bring money, bring money. If you have a business, this is a tax deductible donation, please bring money and help him. He helps over 200 children in Cherokee County that are in foster care because their parents are not taking care of those children, because the parents may be in jail, because the parents may be in a treatment facility, because the parents are not there for the kids. The kids deserve Christmas. So please, this Saturday night, beginning at six o'clock, please come to First Baptist Church Canton. It is up on the top of the hill, not far from Home Depot, and support Bob Reese. He and Linda started doing this as a labor of love over 33 years ago. Hard to believe it's been And they that long. continue to give and give and give, and I'm going to ask you to please be a part of that. You can go to my Facebook page. You can get all the particulars on it. You can see how to get to the church and, and be a part of his ministry. His music is a ministry. It's not about concerts. It's not about CDs. It's not about anything except giving back. And that's what he does. God's love. That's what he does. Absolutely. Celebrating God's love for, for mankind. That's right. And for 200 children in, in uh, Cherokee County to need Christmas says a lot about the world we're in. Well, I think we can just urge everyone out there to pick, pick something to do these holidays mm -hmm, that are coming mm -hmm. up for someone else. That's right. You know, if you're going to cook a lot, cook a lot, but take some and share with someone that needs it. And be a part of the community meal because the community meal is still going on in um, Copper Basin. Every Monday night Every from Monday, 4 until 6 p.m. That's right. And it's at the Methodist Church right up on top of the hill. So it is still a part of your community. And it is there because somebody came in hungry. And a, a wonderful lady named Wanda Pittman said, I don't have any work for you, but I'll feed you. I'll make a sandwich. I'll feed you. And if you're in the area, it doesn't matter if you if you if you've got a, a million dollars in your pocket, still come to the Monday night meal because right. the 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 camaraderie and and we'll, just the sharing with yeah. others is so important. And and it will touch your heart and it will touch your soul. And that's what it's about. You see what time it is? We got to get out of here. We got to get out of here. It's we just got go. here. I know. We just got, got here. here. Everybody. Time to go. Um, thank you for being with us today. Please, please, please do something to impress, to touch, to love a child, and make a difference in a child's life. Read them a book. Do something special, and uh, make sure that they understand that they are the light of your life. We'll see you again soon, only on ETC. Bye, bye, everybody. Have a blessed week. Yay.